What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Chasing Aliens. This week, the uh, Irish and Grand Prix series will go to Monza. Um, no tour race this week, so it's just the the main series, the fixed setup, and the open series. Um, be going up against Soilio's best lap time of a 122.430. Um, chasing his ghost car around and see what we can do with it. Um, Again, same conditions and everything. Uh, however, I think from what I saw, Suelio's lap was recorded using the Elite setup, whereas we'll be uh, using the driver setup for this run. Uh, so yeah, let's get out there and see what we can do. All right, so coming out of Parabolica here onto the main straight. Uh, you'll notice that it seems to gain quite a bit down the straightaway here. I don't know if that's just uh, you know, weirdness from the ERS system or what, but uh, pulls up quite a bit on the entry here. Uh, go through this corner nice and smooth, and then the exit, and he always seems to get out of there really well. Um, I always seem to have a lot of the wheel spin. And getting into this uh, second chicane here, uh, break you know, just a little bit past the hunter board, but then uh, I think I overcooked it just a little bit and had to use those curves a tad, um, which is doable as you can see, but I wouldn't recommend it as a common thing. Um, they will grab the car occasionally and turn the direction you don't want to go. Alright, now down this back straight, if you want to call it that, um, I seem to gain a bit more time, and again, I think it's just kind of some of the weirdness with the RS system. Go through a scary. Do it nice and smooth. We lose a little bit of time here because I'm having to kind of feather the throttle at the end of the uh, input there. Uh, but again, start gaining time pretty quickly towards the end of the straightaway. Break into this corner, uh, take it like a like a NASCAR turn, and then uh, go on a wide exit all the way down. And there's the lap at Monza, and he beat his time. First time for everything. All right, so let's go through and talk about this lap a bit. So coming through uh, the Parabolica and um, and down here on the main straight, <coughs> I noticed that his car seems to pull away quite a bit over the course of the main straight. Um, I don't know if it's something that he was doing different with the ERS versus me, but we get in here, um, I kind of like the last couple of weeks, you know, I'm kind of close through the middle section of the corner, but then routinely he gets better traction out of, out of the first chicane. And then coming down into here again, close up pretty, pretty good under braking. Um, I overcooked it just a bit through here and uh, had to catch those curbs. Um, you can use those curbs to help turn but they're also kind of deadly, so just watch yourself. Um, let me go back through here. Uh, this is a section I noticed. It looks like he kind of runs up a bit, whereas I try to get the car low and actually hit a low apex right in here. He seems to kind of run a little higher. And then I track all the way out because thanks to the improvements they made a couple of seasons ago, I think, uh, Monza's track limits at the Lesmos especially have gotten a lot wider and allow for a little bit more uh, running. So I think as long as you don't hit the dirt, uh, you should be safe from any off tracks. Same thing here. Um, a lot of times with this corner, depending on the car's handling, sometimes I'll even try to get like the, the left sides kind of appear on this lip on the uh, curb just a bit. It just kind of helps de-wedge the car a bit and turn. Um, it's not as bad now because like I said with the Lesmos off track being more lenient um, you can kind of take this a little, it's easier for me at least to take this more naturally clip this part of the curb right here and then just let it kind of drift out and because used to, I mean, I think this much would have gotten you an off track. You would have had to keep your right sides like right around here, I think. So, um, yeah, much easier way to get through here now. Um, if you go too far over, I think if, if all four go past the white here, then it's an off track. Because um, you don't 
you can avoid the gravel and still get it. So uh, just don't let it drift too far to the left, but um, it's definitely a lot nicer now than it used to be. So we come all the way down here. Now, oddly enough, compared to the front straight or the main straight, again, I don't know if it's just ERS funkiness or what, but I close a bunch down this straight. Um, you know, kind of, kind of weirdly, you know, I know, I, I mean, I think I get off the corner a little better, but that keeps, that like seems to increase faster the further down the straightaway we go. So I think a little bit of that is just kind of ERS weirdness. I think one thing overall that I've picked up on is that I don't think his, um, I think he breaks harder later, whereas I don't break quite as hard, but I break a little earlier and just kind of drag the brakes all the way into the next corner. Um, I think it's just two different ways to skin the cat, really. Um, I think breaking harder later is a little bit more of a, I, I, ultimately that's what you want to do, especially in cars like this. Um, but I think also for the sake of, it's good for hot lapping. I feel like personally, I you know, but they tell you also when you're trying to like just manage your tires and stuff. A lot of things that I've seen is it suggests that you don't brake as hard, but you brake earlier. That um, you brake earlier, but not quite as hard. Um, doesn't put as much pressure on the tires or brakes, and doesn't and helps keep them from wearing out as fast. So. Um, which is generally how I drive. Um, try as I might, I am not a hot lapper. So um, I think that's just my driving style is to just brake a little earlier, not quite as hard, and just kind of like control the brakes through the corner. So um, I paused it already, but I wanted to pause it again here. Um, between all the seasons I ran, the McLaren here, and then the two seasons that we've run this car here at Monza so far, I've noticed that the parabolica is where I catch people so ridiculously quickly. It's it, it it's unbelievable. I don't know how why I catch people so fast through here, but if I'm in a battle, I'm almost always I could be half a second behind somebody, get into the parabolica, and I mean I end up coming off that corner like this. So. Um, it's it's one of my strong spots on this track. Um, the only thing I could think of is that somebody in the F1 Discord made the comment that this is similar to a NASCAR style corner, and coming from a NASCAR background, I think that's maybe why I can get through here so well. But you know, here it seems like. I brake a little later, get the car into this apex here, kind of ride that curb a bit, get on the throttle, but then if you can see it down here, or down here, um, I gradually get back to it and just kind of let the car drift out. And that's very much an oval racing thing, is to just gradually get back on the throttle. They used to say, pretend there's an egg under your throttle, um, especially at tracks like Darlington and stuff like that. And then you let the car just kind of lazily track out, kind of like someplace like Michigan or Fontana maybe. Um, and so I think that's where that comes from. Um, so that's something that if you're struggling with getting through Parabolica and you find you're losing a lot of time, um, go run a few NASCAR races. <laughs> Um, you know, kind of learn, you don't really take this, like, I guess you would say a traditional road course style or traditional road course corner. You take this more like a NASCAR corner and you come off of a straightaway instead of turning left, you're turning right. So you come off the straightaway, get the car down to the apex and then let it slowly drift back out. Um, may not have been able to see my movement there, but it's, you know, and gradually get back on the throttle um, instead of like just get on it 
And then, you know, the, the incremental throttle application that I see a lot of people do where it's like immediately go to half, then 75%, then 100%, and all in quick succession. You know, this is one of those where you just want to, you know, ease into it. You know, get to about half and then just kind of ease into it from there. Um, and then talking about off-tracks too, this is one section where they've uh, made the off-tracks a lot less uh, strict. And so you can come pretty wide out here, I think, as long as you keep your right sides on this side of the uh, the white line, you should be all right. Um, and I've noticed that that seems to help kind of better propel the car um, down the straightaway and gives me a little bit of extra speed. So that, uh, that'll do it. That's it for uh, the lap analysis. There you have it. Uh, actually managed to beat Suelio's lap time this go around. Um, we didn't beat the ghost car itself. Uh, it's just because of the the weaker first sector that I have. But uh, from the sector two all the way through, it seemed like we, I was able to keep up with him and uh, had enough speed on him in those last couple of sectors to where we were able to uh, go out and actually beat his lap time, even though the ghost was still ahead of us. So um, good run overall. Um, this is like I said, this is one of my stronger tracks. I feel like I won here last season with this car, so um, should be should be a fun week. Um, just watch out for turn one because there's usually a lot of carnage there. Thankfully, not in this series, but it does happen. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, be sure if you enjoy this content, you like and subscribe to both my channel and to the Matrix Garage YouTube channel as well. And that'll do it for Monza. We'll see you next week.